It has been one year since we built our earth bag root cellar and sadly today we're going to be ripping the top off and filling it in with dirt. As you guys can tell, we're spreading some gravel around the property today to deal with some mud issues that we have, and I gotta get these snow machines moved out of the way.
So we're making pretty good progress back here. Um, earlier this year, we actually had, I think 30 or 40 yards of gravel delivered. So we did a bunch of the property. We did the front of the house, we did the driveway, but today we're kind of just getting all the spots that we didn't get. And then there's a couple areas over next to the orchard that we're gonna kind of just be filling in with gravel and kind of extending our land, I guess, give us a little more room for snow plowing. So I think we're done back here and we're gonna head over there and work on that next. Over here by the orchard, this is where we've had our compost pile. And then this is the section we're gonna to wanna to fill in with some gravel. When we built that orchard, we lost a lot of room to snow plow. So I'm gonna to try to make some of that up. We've got some trees down here. We're gonna extend it a little bit and hopefully have more area to push snow this winter. What I'm gonna do over here first is I'm gonna take uh, our compost pile and I'm gonna move it in front of the orchard, get it out of the way, and then kind of start filling this in with gravel. And once we get it where we want it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the compost pile again and push it back in that far corner, kind of out of the way. pretty much all done with this area for now and I think next up we're gonna head over and start working on the root cellar Constructing the root cellar right now. Um, Eric, starting with the dirt first. There's about two feet of dirt on top of the logs and on top of a layer of earth bags we put, as well as some plastic. And so that's all just still intact because it's only been a year. Um, so Eric's just manually moving these rocks and putting them in the tractor bucket, and we're going to be relocating all this dirt and rocks on a different part of our property. Once we get the whole top off, we will show you guys what's going on. You know, down in there and give you a better look at what's happening. Okay guys, we 
officially can see inside the root cellar. I'm standing on the logs that we use for the roof. We got a layer of earth bags here that we're taking off. We have a layer of house wrap that we're taking off. And we have a layer of greenhouse plastic that we're taking off. And then we still got some more dirt on here. I think we're just gonna work on this section here. Um, get the earth bags and everything off of there. Maybe pull a couple of these logs off and then kind of go from there. Alright, so we got to a little bit of a predicament. We had hoped we were going to be able to pull the shelves out. We have three shelves down here. Two of them are very badly damaged. We already knew that. One is a little bit damaged, but we wanted to, you know, make use of it, but it's just pinched in there way too much. Um, and I just don't think, we don't think there's gonna be absolutely any way to get it out without, you know, coming back in here and excavating around the whole thing again. And that's just not an option for us. So we are at the stage now where we're going to be filling in the root cellar. And obviously we're gonna be using the earth bags and the dirt since that is exactly, you know, what they're made up from the ground here. And unfortunately there's just gonna be some other things in the hole as well. So this is what we're working with. Um, the walls have started to you know, come in because of all the force on them on the outside. And so it's pinched these shelves. It's pinched this shelf against that one and really, really, really bent it pretty severely. So if you guys remember when we built this, we are sitting at six feet below grade and we have the logs and then, you know, the earth bags and the dirt on top. And there's about three feet of water down there. We've had a really high water year. Um, our water table is only three feet, three to four feet uh, beneath the ground right now. So much different than when we built it. It was at 10 feet last year. Um, so a really big difference, which is partially why this thing is just not working out for us. So we're sadly gonna keep working on this and it may take us some time. We may be out here probably tomorrow doing it as well. Just a minute, been looking for some help just to find myself. Yeah, been losing my focus like a thousand times before. Can't take this anymore. Cause I've been looking for something to change thoughts into motion. Been waiting way too long. Oh, yeah, waiting. Just for somebody to love and to surround me And to handle my emotions I was out waiting for something And if I close my eyes It's all been a waste of time I was out driving every mile And now if I rewind It's all been a waste of time
All right, guys, we are sitting where the root cellar used to be, sadly. So we're gonna talk about that and why we chose to bury it. Um, I know that may seem like a shock. Uh, we haven't really talked about it. It's not really a shock to us because we've lived here and we've kind of saw what was going on with the root cellar. So we built this thing back in July of last year and we were pretty excited when we built it. It was a place for us to store all our canned food and a whole bunch of crops. And soon after we built it, we did have that fall we had some water come up into the root cellar how much would you say maybe about been about a foot about a foot and a half maybe at the max but we, it, we had our sump pump down there and we were pumping it out and it really wasn't too bad at all wasn't that bad we were just thinking that wasn't really ideal right and it was pretty moist down there i mean we were in like the 90s so all winter everything was fine you know it stayed just above freezing i mean we had potatoes and carrots down there in june and we were still eating those we didn't have that many jars left I don't think we had that many jars that we needed to go through yeah. and now of course we've started canning again and so about late june was when we first noticed some of the major issues we had went down there there was water of course because of the you know spring melt off i think we started getting water in april actually mm -hmm. and we started to see some of the shelves had bent from a lot of the pressure being put on the walls and that was kind of like the point where we were like okay things aren't working out down here so like Arrow mentioned earlier in the video, when we built this thing, our water table was at 10 feet down. That's when we hit water with the excavator. And that was last year. That was an extremely dry year. This year has been an extremely wet year. It's, we almost haven't even had a summer. I mean, we get a nice day here and it's a rarity. So we've had so much rain. Uh, we've had flash floods, hailstorms, thunder and lightning, like almost every other day. It's been pretty crazy. So our water table right now is only three feet below the ground where we're standing. So major difference from last year when we built this thing and i'm going to say that's one of the main reasons that this thing failed was all the water moving in the ground you know the water freezing in the ground from winter into spring and i think it just was too wet down there and what Ariel means by the shelves bending when we went down there the earth bag walls um two of them probably mostly started to kind of bow in in the middle kind of pinched our shelves in there and we first noticed because when we went down our hatch our ladder had actually bent in a little bit and was crooked pretty obviously yeah it started small and then it got greater and that obviously is a safety concern because those earth bags are like bricks so if any of it's compromised if you get away from the straight wall then you're just gonna lose the structure entirely eventually so it wasn't that dramatic but um, we kind of knew that it wasn't gonna be something that was gonna last for much longer. It was dramatic enough that we decided we were gonna pull every single thing out of the root cellar. That included all of the canned food we had left over and also all of our empty jars that were being stored down there. Yeah, so it was a tremendous loss um, as far as storage, definitely food storage. That's the whole purpose of it for us. For this year, yeah, we pretty much don't know what we're gonna do. We're gonna be storing a lot of our canned food and our crops inside, which is not ideal. They might just not last as long for us. But another thing that sucks with losing the root cellar is we lost you know, our ability to use it as a refrigerator for, you know, curing meat and brining meat and things like that. And that was one of the main reasons why we built the root cellar was for the root crops. Um, we really need potatoes and carrots to store in that ideal temperature for them to last that long. And we're just not gonna get that in the cabin, um, but that's just, that's what we're doing this year because we don't really have, you know, another option. We haven't figured out a good one. And looking back, we spent a lot of energy on that earth, on making the earth bag shelter and I mean, there, it was such a good experience for us. I feel like we learned so much about the ground and about food storage, and I really don't regret it. I wouldn't change it in the fact that we learned from it and we just believe in doing things and learning from them, learning from our mistakes. And I feel like from here, we can just move forward. <laughs> You know, start start fresh, um, go back to the drawing board, as they say. Yep, and as far as what we're gonna do, um, if we're gonna continue to grow our own food and grow vegetables and, and hunt and preserve meat, we're definitely gonna need to do something. So the wheels are turning in our minds. We have a few different ideas. Definitely nothing's gonna happen this year. We have, we have too much on the table this year. We're too busy. So like Errol said, we're just gonna be keeping our stuff in the cabin. It's not gonna last as long this year. A side note, getting rid of the root cellar, that big hump on the ground has gave us more area on our property to park trucks, snow machines, you know, the boat. And it's also given us more room to snow plow this year. With that being said, um, I wanted to show you guys the woodshed because we got it all filled up with wood. We built the woodshed to handle or fit eight cords of wood. And as you can tell, we have way more than that. Um, by the time we took all the wood off the property, split it and stacked it, we got about 10 cords of wood. So we had to stack some 
out front of the woodshed this year. We're gonna be using that first. And if you come in, we have some extra wood sitting right here. This is a whole nother row that's kind of not supposed to be here. And then from here back, that's all the main storage. On this side also, this whole stack right here is not meant to be here. So this is an extra row, but we definitely got this thing filled up and we probably have about two plus years of wood in here. So still loving the woodshed. I'm gonna show you guys around the property and what we did with the gravel and keep in mind what our goal was with the gravel this year was to minimize the amount of mud that we get in the spring and also to kind of open up some areas and clear some things out and give us some more room when we're doing snow removal this winter. We did have a tree that was right here that unfortunately was attacked by the beetles. So that one was dead. We took that one out and we extended this area a couple feet and this is gonna give us a big open area to snow plow and a little more room, you know, going off the edge to push the snow. Pretty much from here forward was just no gravel. Um, we've never had gravel in here in this area, so it was extremely muddy. And then over here, this is actually an area that we wanted to extend to have more room to snow plow. But as you can tell, we didn't have enough gravel to finish that. So I'm gonna smooth that off a little this year. And then next year, we'll probably bring in a little more gravel over there. Let's head over to the other side of the orchard where we did some major extensions of the property. This is the area we're gonna to try to make up some room for snow plowing since we put in that orchard and we can't snow plow there anymore. So we used about 10 yards of gravel here and kind of extended the property out into the bog a little bit. We also put our compost pile over there. As you can tell, we have a ton of extra room now. We can park our ranger here, park our truck here. And we're also gonna be parking our trailer over here. Quite a bit of our property um, goes back that way into the bog and then there's a hill back on that backside. And we wanna have a path out to the bees and this is gonna be it. This is gonna be the area that we walk and we drive out to the bees. Over here is a bandit's pond. He's done some major excavation work over there this year. We have talked about putting maybe like an outdoor hangout slash kitchen area over here. Not gonna happen anytime soon and things are always changing with us as far as plans go, but pretty much gonna be it for this video. We are definitely happy to have this gravel in and it's gonna to go to good use this year. We'll see you guys next time.